not a good sign to find mud in there. Ooh, she's locked up tight. I was able to finally turn the engine over using a half inch breaker bar and it brought this mud up from the bottom end. It's been standing full of mud. Okay, so we start out, I'll make a fair warning that the center clutch hub is easily broken when you try to take it off without using a holding tool. So I show here a tool I made out of the metal clutch plates from an old clutch. If you use a pry bar like shown here, you will almost certainly break this hub. And it will look like this when you break it. Alternatively, you can use a small pistol grip impact to get that nut loose, but don't put anything on the hub to hold it. Just use the impact and the hub will spin and the nut will come loose. We remove the kickstart idle gear and then we pull out the shifting shaft. It looks like that and that's the hole it comes out of. Then we take off the kickstart and you need to reach your finger around behind there and grip it as you rotate it counterclockwise to release the little thumb from underneath that plate. The reason you need to hold this together is you don't want that bottom piece to fall off and then you lose your indexing which is your spring return preload and that's what controls the kickstart pedal return and that foot there I'm showing slides under that plate and I had previously loosened this big nut on the primary driven gear set this also drives your water pump in addition to your clutch basket this is all on a straight shaft not tapered so it's not an interference fit however it can stick a little bit and using my gasket here I show you I don't take much effort to break it loose it's just on there and usually you can just grip it and pull it up with your fingers keep these parts together as you take them off so you don't get confused later there's a serrated washer there the big nut you can see here there's a woodruff key and that the shaft is straight I use an impact to take out all of these screws it's just a little electric pistol grip one and I'm showing here where all the screws are there's one kind of hidden and it's in the very front on the outside there forward of the cylinder I like to keep everything in little trays according to that area of the engine so reassembly is easier keep all the parts laid out nice usually the cases will separate just a few taps with a rubber mallet if the cases are stuck together like the crank bearings are corroded into the cases for example on occasion I have used stainless steel putty knives and actually they're so thin they're not much thicker than the gasket you can get a couple of them in on each end of the engine where the cases are much thicker and then you can use a thicker putty knife between the two thin ones and begin to pry apart just by tapping in the putty knife into the center and the cases will come apart this is a worst case scenario but I've had to do it so I show it and it works on this engine featured in the video I don't have any problem the cases came right apart just perfectly however one of the bearings did stay on the crank after I get the gasket material cleaned off the center cases and I've got them all stripped down I like to use a sanding block a flat one here and this is actually 180 grit paper not very much sand you just scuff it up just make sure that the surfaces are perfectly clean take out all the remaining seals and things remembering this was a mass of goo I have to really scrub these engine cases and I'm first starting out with some dental tools ultimately I used 
a new fine stainless steel brush with lava hand soap and hot water and scrub the mud out of every little crevice and clean very carefully the little passageways on the sides of the transfer ports so I freeze my bearings I've been doing this for a long time these are the crank main bearings and it works really good as you'll see here and I use a hot plate set to 350 and I do one case halve at a, at a time and I use a pistol grip thermometer laser and you work quickly so your case doesn't cool down grab your frozen bearing one at a time and <laughs> it drops right in there I still find that amazing and when the temperatures equalize it's in there I had uh, one other bearing I was going to change here on the left case have so I took advantage of this moment I didn't even freeze that one it was just at room temperature and so it didn't drop right in but it went in really easily and there's no side to this bearing it's symmetrical and so I took my hammer handle and just gave it a few little taps and it went right in as you can see there I have this engine stand for many years it's universal for motorcycle engines I'm ready to reassemble it I found this galled area there on the shift drum where it rides on the needle bearing I didn't like that. It had worn away the um, hard anodized coating. In the workshop, I had a perfectly good used one, so I just used it on this job. And it probably would have worked, but with the nice one, for sure, it will shift a little better. There's two spring-loaded wheels, little arms with wheels on them. The inner one is your neutral. The outer one or the one to the bottom right in this video is the one for each gear and lithium white lube there on the bearing on the drum is a deep notch you can see there that's actually neutral and when that wheel there is lying in that little notch you are in neutral so we will assemble the engine in neutral and as we proceed forward you will see why this is a little tedious putting the drum in. If you had two people to do this, one person to hold the preload on the two arms and the other person just to slide the drum in, it would be really easy because you kind of need three hands here. But you can put the drum in partially and load the neutral arm and then get the gear arm loaded over there and a little wiggling and prying to get everything in place and, and it falls in place and then a quick test shift and returning it to the neutral position you can see there I like to install the gearbox upright there is this gear on the primary shaft the clutch shaft it has a shoulder on it and the other side of it is flat the shoulder faces out as you can see here that can fall off and you can get confused so I explain it automatic transmission fluid and I paint that on my parts just makes things slide notice that little tiny shim washer I showed there and the transmission assembly just slides right in there a little wiggling and you can see as it falls through that's not at all an interference fit on those bearings that just goes right in there once I've got it in, then I'll rotate my cases and stand them upright. The reason I put it in sideways is because I don't want that little shim washer or anything in that stat from falling off as I'm pressing it on. On your shift forks, two of them are the same, and they are the ones that are on the secondary or output shaft. The one that is different is the shift fork on the primary or clutch shaft. The two shift fork shafts are identical in length and dimensions 
I don't think you could get one of these bent, but just check them. And again, I'm lubricating all the little parts as I work here so that when I test shift the engine later, it won't be dry. And it's pretty obvious how the fork goes on there and falls into the little channel on the drum. When the drum's sitting in neutral, everything goes together. And you'll need to manipulate these gears a little bit with your fingers, a little wiggling to get the gear to slide up so that the little pin on the fork falls into the channel on the drum there. You can see that's what I just did. I show again. Then the next fork, and remember these two on this side, they're identical. You can keep track of which one went where, but they're the same. And then just sliding my shaft in there on the next pair of forks and we have the gearbox assembled and it will be in neutral now as I will demonstrate see the shafts all spin freely because it's in neutral and I will lubricate the crank bearings with the white lithium grease this just gives the engine a nice clean start up when everything's brand new and you first fire it up and bring it to life you don't have anything somewhat dry and yeah that lithium when it's burning up you'll be smoking there for a few minutes when you first run it and I prefer the silicone grease on the seals you put it in the lip in there and it kind of stays for a little while lets the seal break in nicely some of these tricks I show in my videos I learned from my friends over in Spain, older gentlemen, some of them no longer with us, sadly. Some of them long retired from the business. Some of them still working, but not many. And I make these videos now because I'm thinking that someone needs to pass this information on before it's forgotten. This is a Permatex product, and this is not product placement or an endorsement of any kind. It's a spray gasket sealant. It's red. And I like it because it's a, actually for me, it's a glue. So I glue the gasket to the case half. As you can see here, it is on there. Then installing the crankshaft. Again, this is not really any kind of an interference fit. So it slides right down in there. Keeping everything lubricated, of course. So with my gasket sealant paint, for lack of a better word, that gasket is stuck to the clean cases there. It's not going to wander around when I add the left case half. You can see there my bearing and seal are lubricated. And we're going to put this together very carefully so we don't nick our crank seal. Line everything up and then some wiggling and the only thing that keeps this from falling perfectly in place is that the two spring-loaded wheels on the shift drum kind of cause the drum itself to cock just a little. So it takes some tapping, but it goes right together. And spinning the crank and, and things like that, making sure the con rod is pointed straight out so you don't hammer it with the left case have. And spin the crank, spin the gearbox, everything should be just fine. We'll put all the bolts in that hold the cases together. Then we'll recheck everything to make sure there's nothing binding. And I like to lubricate the threads on the bolts with a little silicone grease also. It just makes things go together easier. And I'm going to use my little Makita, again, not product placement, pistol grip impact, but I have it set at the absolute softest position and you can stop it with your hand so it's not hammering these bolts it's just speeding my work up a little bit and I show here in the video which bolt goes where and I show here that it's on the softest setting you can see I can stop it with my hand I speed this up, no point in boring you with that process. Then I follow with the T-handled Allen wrench, and I'm not going to talk about torque. Come on, man, this is just common sense stuff. I lock the cases into my little stand now with this nut. That way I can spin them and they won't fall out of the stand and hit the floor. 
and we'll spin her over and we'll work on the other side button it up and we will start with the primary driven gear which earlier I showed how it comes off I have the little Woodruff key removed here some like to mark with a sharpie you know the center line of a keyway or whatever but I find that that Woodruff key will just go right down in there and I use a bronze drift here and just tap tap and it's in and then followed with the next gear remembering that we had this stack so that we put it on correctly and then our serrated washer and you can see that nut has a mark on it where the serrated washer was previously showing you which side of the nut goes down I'm not going to tighten this yet because that can wait till later and we will put together our kickstart mechanism reverse of what we took apart again holding the pieces together with my fingers so they don't fall apart and lose my index turning it so that thumb goes underneath that little glider plate and there is when in the relaxed position this spring is shown here and then you wind it around over to the two o'clock position and poke it into that hole shown in that picture this is where you can get bit with your tools that spring can fly around and get you then you got to look at the spring there and make sure it's seated nice and there is a, an aluminum bushing down inside that spring there slides over the shaft has a notch in it that lays down over the spring where it goes into the shaft so you have to be sure all those parts are seated or your clutch cover won't go back on correctly I mark that piece with a sharpie so I can look right down in there with the flashlight little check real quick keep intention on the parts make sure that it seems to work okay following we go with the kickstart what I call idle gear first is the tiny little thin washer then the gear and the needle bearing you can see the bearing there goes on there and you may have a problem getting that on there and that's because the spring on the kickstart kind of cocks it a little so you can see with my right hand that pushed the shaft back a little bit the flat washer and circlips as I show in some videos have really two sides because they're punched when they're made the sharp side faces towards pressure of course this gear really has no pressure pushing against it sideways but we'll put the sharp edge out and then with a little pressure on the kickstart shaft to center it up you can see everything spins freely and when the clutch cover is on there all these parts will be in proper alignment now we will follow with the shifting shaft mechanism making sure all the pieces are correctly assembled and the two little claw tips on the shaft are nice and sharp we put it together and that little the two little feet sticking out there on the spring slide down over that post that's between the shaft and the drum so you have to pull back that spring loaded arm the claw and make sure that spring sits over that little post correctly and then that claw will sit down over those six posts on the drum and that's what shifts your drum through the gears now we will put the big thick washer on the primary shaft and put together the main clutch hub with the center bushing and two needle bearings followed with the very thin washer followed with the center clutch hub there is an index to this hub but not at this point you just put it on there there is a chromium machined bushing there as I'm installing on later model engines the engines in the early 90s don't have that and then the big flat nut it's kind of difficult to manipulate that it goes down in that that bushing piece and we will tighten this just kind of snug just finger tight because it can move left and right and here I point out on those six posts one of them has a line 
drawn across it right there. That corresponds with this cast in line on the pressure plate. That is your indexing of your clutch. That's critical. And I show all this in detail in my clutch video. But what I'm doing here is I'm centering that bushing. Now remember that big nut in the center is not tight. It's just finger tight. That lets that bushing get all lined up there. And then I will put my clutch holding tool on there. And with my 3 8 drive pistol grip impact. I'm going to give this a little shot to tighten it up. You can do this by hand if you want. Again, I don't have a torque spec. Just common sense. Now we're going to tighten the big nut. And to be honest with you, I usually use a half inch drive pistol grip impact and give it a little shot. And I'll show you here how you can also do it using your clutch holding tool. But again, you have to be careful that you don't break the outer clutch hub. However, it is much stronger than the posts on that inner one. And I'm giving it a good snug with the big breaker bar. And remember, there's a serrated washer, so that's tight. And it's not coming loose. Okay, so there you have that side of the engine. Let's go ahead and test it for shifting at this point, remembering that we have to keep some pressure on the shift shaft from the right side so we don't press it to the right, causing that claw to pop off of the little posts on the drum. So spinning the primary shaft clutch hub piece, I'm able to take it through the gears here as you can clearly see it's a little notchy in spots but there's no oil in there and there's nothing dragging against the output shaft or counter shaft when all the parts are together and the sprocket and chain is on it it works there's one disc in this new clutch that looks like a metal disc but has fiber on one side that's called the mixed disc it's the different one it goes in first facing fiber down followed by a fiber and a metal and so on i only recommend that you replace the entire clutch pack metals and fibers and the reason is there's a variation there's two versions of this clutch and the second version has two more discs its total width is the same all the discs are a little thinner so if you buy only fibers, you have about a 50% chance that you're going to have a clutch that doesn't work right because your metal discs are not the correct thickness. This little piece looks like a valve for a four-stroke engine that goes in there. And again, all of this is in detail covered in my clutch video for these engines. So I go real fast through this in this one. If you want to know more then review that video. And again, I'm making sure I'm lined up with my hatch mark and putting my springs in. And again, I'm going to use my little pistol grip impact set on the very easiest setting. And these little bolts are special with little special washers. Start those by hand and make sure they are going in there. Don't use the impact to start those bolts or you will likely cross thread one of them i just run them in and then a little quarter inch drive impact just snugging them up they don't come loose there's a lot of spring pressure and that flat washer just bottoms out against those posts so this isn't some critical torque setting just don't over tighten and snap them off that's it on that side of the engine it's all buttoned up Let's put that top end on there. Usually I put three base gaskets, a half millimeter, 0 0.5 on the bottom, and a pair of 0.3s. That gives me 1.1 of the total stack. Why am I doing this? We'll talk about squish here in a minute. I only put two on this engine. I was second guessing myself into oblivion. Ultimately, my squish was too tight and I had to take the top end back off and put another gasket in there. The back of the piston, there are two little pins that are where your ring openings are at. Everything has been painted with some 
gearbox oil. Squeezing the rings, manipulating them with two fingers while wiggling on the cylinder, and making sure it's perfectly aligned on the piston as you wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You get it on there. Slide it down, everything's fine. Piston passes through the ports. And then we will be taking a look at the cylinder head. It was covered with an immense amount of carbon and mud, so I cleaned it really good. On these cylinders, there's a code there. This says 28T01. That means it's a 280 Trials 2001. 28 T Trials 01 2001. My surface plate, checking it to see if it's warped. Does it make a clicking sound? A tiny little bit. It's not really warped in the sense of being warped, so it's going to be fine. I have a video on head o rings. You grease them, holds them in position so they don't fall out. But I put the head on, I hold a constant pressure, downward pressure on it as I run just two bolts in there. This way, I can check my squish. I just tighten them up snug. And I have this rosin core solder, electrical solder. That's 1.5 millimeters in diameter, approximately. And I bend me a little L-shaped piece of the solder and put it in through the spark plug hole so that the tip of that solder goes out to the outer edge of the piston, run the engine over, and it comes to a stop there, and then I have to give it a good little shove, and that's going to compress that solder. Then I can take my caliper and check it. What I want is 1.5 to 1.5 millimeters in thickness there. That's my squish. That's top of cylinder head and top of piston at top dead center. I'm too tight. I'm 0.9. Sure enough. So I have to take the top end back off and add another base gasket here. Oops. If it had been too much, I would just lift the top end and cut one gasket out with an X-Acto knife, and I wouldn't have to re-manipulate the piston rings. So anyway, I have the top end all together. Torque on the head bolts is 9 foot-pounds for the 6 millimeter head bolts, 18 foot-pounds for the 8 millimeter head bolts. That's diameter of the bolt. I use a 10 millimeter socket to push the gasket down over those two little bushings. Water pump has been totally rebuilt. It was also nasty. I have an in-depth water pump rebuilding video, so no point in going over that here. Wiggle, wiggle and wiggle the impeller because you want that gear on the water pump that's plastic to mesh with the metal gear below. Quick check! Making sure our water pump is rotating. Yes, it is. All right. Button up that clutch cover. I don't have to show you how to put bolts in. Here's the engine all done. Ignition system back on it. A water hose ready to package and ship back to the customer April 2019 thank you for watching another one of my videos this is Jim Snell 